I am Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council with a report from the Billy Graham Training Center, the Cove, where uh, the Anglican Church in North America has just met this week. And want to give you a, a right up to the date report on our provincial council. Uh, provincial council is the supreme legislative body of the Anglican Church in North America. And uh, it was a great session on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. I think the highlight was Archbishop Foley's address to Provincial Council, which of course happens every Provincial Council, the Archbishop's address. I don't have exact quotes, but I want to share with you some of the highlights of that address. Uh, Archbishop Foley said this year he likened to the analogy with his car, looking both in the rear view mirror, what's in the past, and through the front windshield. And in the rear view mirror, we have the pandemic, political unrest, and cultural upheaval. But then he said something interesting. He said that really judgment begins with the household of God. So the most disconcerting thing is not even what's going on in our culture, but what's often gone on in the church. And he specifically addressed the tone, vitriol, and personal attacks on brothers and sisters in Christ, especially clergy to clergy, on social media. Archbishop Foley quoted from James uh, chapter 3 verse 5 about the power of the tongue and posed the question, are we using our tongues wisely to bring healing? Or as the Bible says, are, are our tongues being like thrusts of a spear? He noted that we are falling, fall short, uh, and that it's time to repent uh, from being emotive rather than carefully thinking, biblically shaped thought leaders of our church, and that we need to recover our basic use and knowledge of scripture. To those who are frequent commenters on social media, Archbishop Foley also posed the question, uh, why do you think you are so important that you need to post your opinion on every issue? There's a certain humility we all ought to have that he commended to us from James 1.21 and that we need to repent and practically follow the Archbishop's protocol for using social media. In terms of some of the secular theories that have dominated our public discourse, um, Archbishop warned that these secular theories must not invade the church and take over. We must anchor our believing and doing in the Bible. He specifically addressed crit critical race theory, which he noticed has some things helpful, but is also full of anti-Christian and anti-biblical assertions. For instance, uh, our fundamental belief that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God means that all people can and will be guilty of racism at some point. And he noted that secular theories leave God out of the picture. The only hope we had, said the Archbishop, is through Christ breaking down the dividing walls of hostility. Quoting from Ephesians chapter 2. And he commended uh, presiding Bishop Ray Sutton of the REC's uh, excellent address to uh, the REC Synod recently in which uh, Bishop Sutton addressed both critical race theory and sexual identity. Then uh, looking at uh, uh, the church, he said, you know, we have made some progress. We have become more multicultural through things like the Anglican multi-ethnic network, uh, through every tribe and nation, uh, through uh, African-American denominations joining uh, ACNA. And he noted, quoting rightly from Galatians 3, where, uh, where Paul says, to the Galatians. He says, look, in verse uh, 26, so in Christ Jesus, uh, in chapter three, you are all children of God through faith. There is neither Jew or Gentile. In other words, we don't uh, define ourselves by our racial identities, neither slave nor free. We don't define ourselves by our economic identities, nor is there male and female. We don't identify ourselves by gender or sexual orientation, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
was a ringing endorsement of the kind of biblical faithfulness and orthodoxy upon which the Anglican Church in North America was founded. And then he made another final point. Um, he said, canonically, ecclesiastically, and biblically, the teaching role of the bishop is critical. He said, this is fundamental to our Anglican identity and polity to have bishops teaching, and they will continue to teach, and their statements will continue uh, to inform the whole body of the Anglican Church in North America. What do we see through the front windshield? He commended the, the new task force Anglican 2030, which uh, Dean of the College of Bishops, Kevin Allen, is pulling together to come up with a, a vision, a picture of what uh, ACNA will look like in 10 years. Another highlight after the Archbishop's uh, stirring address was a wonderful testimony uh, by the Reverend Canon John Stasny and Pastor Roy Smith. Uh, John Stasny, uh, Anglo, uh, Pastor Roy Smith, uh, Black. They partnered together in ministry over many years now in Midland, Texas. Uh, and they talked about the, both the cost of that partnership uh, and, and the fruit of that partnership in terms of supporting each other to different congregations. And Pastor Roy Smith gave a stirring um, conclusion. He said, look, these partnerships are exactly what, what America needs right now, but they must be intentional. We need to understand the cost of partnering across racial lines with people of different color and different backgrounds. And that in fact, this is an issue of spiritual warfare because when we do this in our highly charged culture today, we are actually invading enemy territory and strongholds. He said, when we make these partnerships, divorce is not an option. We need to repent of ways we have not loved each other in public and remember the words of Dr. Martin Luther King and that Jesus Christ is Lord of color as well. There was strong, loud, standing ovation for that testimony as a biblical example of the kind of racial reconciliation that can and should take place in every community. Bishop Guernsey gave the uh, provincial report and emphasized progress that has been made in areas of uh, child protection and safeguarding, but more is to be done. Uh, Bishop-elect Alan Hawkins gave the COO report uh, on the five provincial initiatives, uh, the Forward Always Forward Church Planting Initiative, Matthew 25, the Next Generation Leadership Initiative, Every Tribe, Nation, uh, Network, and the Global Missions. And there were reports from each of those about the progress that these five uh, provincial initiatives have made. In addition to that, uh, there was also recognition of the Evergreen Project and how that has helped to financially resource the province. Um, there was a wonderful report. Another highlight was uh, Ken and Andrew Gross's congregational report. How do you report on congregational average Sunday morning attendance in a year of pandemic when we were shut down for so many weeks? What can we say are the meaningful metrics? And there are some very meaningful metrics he shared that showed a couple of things. Number one is that our congregational ASA, based as it was on the figures we had, was very stable from 2019 to 2020. Secondly, that what congregations learned is that, that they needed to retain outdoor worship, um, online worship, and small group worship. 77% of our congregations are gonna retain that uh, in one way or another along with in-person. And in terms of gained competencies, uh, we all learned uh, technical prowess and how to do online worship. We learned a lot of humility uh, through the mistakes we made, but also we gained an appreciation for the limits of online worship that we truly are incarnational people who need to gather together in person for worship. We elected people to the provincial courts, uh, court for the trial of a bishop, uh, the Court of Extraordinary Jurisdiction and Provincial Tribunal. Uh, those were um, 
good processes, lots of nominees, great elections. Uh, our car courts are fully staffed and ready to go. And on our last day, we went through the report of the governance task force on proposed changes to our canons, particularly in the area of uh, diocesan minimums, uh, strengthening dioceses, uh, and a, a discipline for, uh, for bishops uh, and other clergy. Um, it, was, uh, it was a challenging task, uh, and yet the church came together, despite differences, and agreed on the changes that were proposed. All in all, this was a very, uh, a very busy, uh, very business-packed, but very inspirational and ultimately edifying gathering of the whole church, deciding together uh, on everything that touches the church. It's a good sign that at, um, at over 10 years old, we are in our adolescence, but we are growing and we are bearing good fruit. So here ends my report. This is Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council reporting to you from Provincial Council 2021. God bless you.